I need to give up these long nails because this is just not a job for someone with long nails. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube. First of all, just want to apologize that I haven't really been uploading many videos lately. Me and Philip have been traveling like crazy. We've been to America, we've been to Germany, I've been to England. Borders are opening up again and our lives kind of going back to normal and we're just doing a lot of traveling again. I feel really good being back home in Switzerland in the apartment and just kind of getting back into a routine again. Anyway, what I want to show you today is my new recipe which is a healthy take on the classic apple crumble. This recipe is really something that I grew up with. I think a lot of people did. My mum was always making it throughout my childhood and it's just really like a homey type of comfort food that just really makes you feel good. The only problem with it is that it is full of butter, fat and refined sugar and it's really really kind of fattening and not good for you. So I wanted to make a healthy alternative. The main thing I wanted to focus on here was not to use any processed foods or refined foods. I wanted to keep it as natural as possible. We're literally just using dates and apples for sweetener. It wasn't easy <laughs> to practice making it because at the beginning, as you can imagine, with no sugar, it was kind of hard to make it taste good. But anyways, I hope you guys really love the recipe. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. And yeah, other than that, enjoy. So the first thing that we want to do is make our date paste. To do this, we put all of our dates into the blender and we're gonna blend them up until it makes a smooth paste. Start with our mixing bowl and we are just gonna pour our oats and then we're gonna add our flour. I like to use spelt flour instead of normal flour because it is a lot more natural and less refined. This is whole grain spelt flour. You can also buy white flour, but again, the whole grain version is a lot healthier and still has a lot more nutrients inside. A sprinkle of salt. And we're going to add our apple sauce. One. These are heaped tablespoons, by the way. Two, three, four, five. We're going to add our date paste. So again, I use 10 very large dates, but if you use smaller dates, then you can use 15 and our 100 ml of coconut oil. I like to initially mix it together with a spoon before I get my hands in there. By the way, please don't judge my nails. I have no idea what I was thinking. They look like Halloween nails. So once it's roughly mixed together, I know the dates will still be in one big lump, but that's when I like to get my hands in and really crumble up. This is the outcome of someone who goes into the nail shop unprepared. I usually have a very good idea of what I want, but this time I had no idea. I was sleep deprived, had no idea what I was doing. It came out very much Halloween-like, and there you go. Halloween nails in September. By the way, you'll probably notice that this apple crumble is extra gooey, and there is a reason for that. The reason actually is, normally when you make a normal apple crumble and you use butter the butter has a very creamy texture which kind of comes out a bit more when you cook it however when you make a vegan version you're not using any butter or cream so we need to make it extra creamy before we put it in the oven so then it comes out more gooey and it has more of a texture of how a normal apple crumble would but you really want to make sure that you're breaking up the date paste because the date paste really clumps together and you really want it all mixed in really well. I need to give up these long nails because this is just not a job for someone with long nails. A very doughy crumble, but do not worry. It is gonna be an actually really nice, gooey, yummy, delicious crumble. Okay, so we're just gonna put this over to one side now and I'm gonna start to peel my apples. I like to wait until I've already done the crumble before I peel my apples because as you probably know, apples go brown after they're peeled. So I like to do that at the very last step. So we wanna get a baking tray. I'm not sure how big this baking tray is. 
I want to say 12 centimeters, but I really I actually have no idea. So just find a baking tray that looks like this. So I recently went back to England just to fill you in. It was because my granddad died. He was actually 96 years old. It's really sad and I'm really going to miss him. But, you know, when someone's 96 years old, you just have to think like they've lived such a long life. And it's so nice that he's been able to live that long and see like so many different things like throughout his life. So I'm also very happy for him. But speaking of dying of old age, it just got me thinking like he when people ask me why he died and i say well he died of old age like he was old but like in the book i'm reading now which is called how not to die it's all about like nutrition and actually i've only just started reading it so i'm still on the first chapter but already in the first chapter it says people don't just die of old age it says like not really like they always die of something like you're not just dying because you're old and thinking about it what did my granddad die of? Like he died because he was smoking his whole life and his lungs were really messed up. So yeah, it just got me thinking like, do people really die of old age? Like, is that a thing? I know as you get older, like your cells get weaker, but the main cause of death is like heart disease, strokes, cancer, things like this. And these are all like very closely related to how we eat and our diet. So that's why I'm really focusing on trying to make really really healthy recipes not using refined sugars and you know the interesting thing is eventually like once you get used to cutting out sugar a bit more the things that maybe you thought were nice before they don't taste as good anymore because you adapt to like this healthier way of eating and you learn to appreciate it a bit more and then when you go back to eating things that are like very processed very full of sugar you realize it doesn't taste like real food and also it tastes like too sweet. So even if at first, maybe you taste it and you're like, oh, it's, it's not really what I'm used to. But once you like adapt this healthy eating way, then you can really learn to enjoy this food and appreciate it. I think it tastes good anyway. I'm not saying it tastes bad, but if you're used to having a lot of um, refined sugar and processed foods, then when you first start eating really natural foods, it does taste a bit weird. And yeah, I'm just really into it now and I'm really enjoying this new way of life. Okay, so that is all my apples peeled. I've been using three apples, but if you need to use four, if you have a bigger tray, you can use four. And I just cut them about this big. So I'm putting me and Philip on a healthiest diet we could possibly be on. This is the way forward. That's why I feel I have to speak about it try and get everybody else in the mood and then we can all just be on a health kick together okay so i have got my apples here what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna sprinkle some cinnamon on top this just gives it a nice flavor so i'm just gonna mix together the cinnamon and the apples to make sure they all have cinnamon on make sure all of the apples are evenly spread around the baking tin if you need to cut some apples up a bit smaller to make them fit then do so. Then we're gonna take our crumbly dough and we are gonna crumble it on top. If you see any lumps whilst doing this, then just smooth them out with your fingers into the crumble. Okay, so we're just making sure it is all, all of the apples are covered. Okay, so this is how our apple crumble should be looking. It smells so good. So our oven, I forgot to say at the beginning, it should be preheated to 180 degrees. And we are gonna put our apple crumble in. What I like to do is I like to cover it with some tin foil so it doesn't dry out too much and the apples keep the moisture. I just find that when you don't cover things, when you put them in the oven, they really dry out a lot. And I like my apple crumble moist. Okay, so we're now gonna put this in the oven for 30 to 35 minutes. So I wanted to show you what I use as a plant-based substitute to cream. It's very simple, it's three ingredients and it's something that I use all the time if I want cream. The ingredients are coconut milk, maple syrup and some cinnamon. This carton has 250 millilitres inside. I'm going to use about half the carton. So I have just added my cinnamon into my mix and I'm just mixing that together. Now I'm going to add one teaspoon of maple syrup into my bowl 
The reason why there's not really exact measurements here is because it's really something that you can adjust to your liking. There's no like right or wrong way to do this. It's really just however you like it. And yeah, that is my cream replacement. What I like to do after the half an hour is up is I take it out of the oven. I just like to stab it to see if the apple is still cooked underneath. I'm gonna put it back in the oven for an extra 10 minutes. And this time I'm going to leave the tinfoil off. So here we have the final result. It looks so good. And the reason why we put it in the second time with no covering is just to make it go slightly brown on top. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mmm. It's so good. I don't know why I'm clenching my fist. I'm not even exaggerating. It's really good. I don't like to blow my own trumpet, but... I really smashed this one, especially considering it's really like not unhealthy at all. Like, there's nothing bad in here. But I just wanted to take a moment as well to tell you that my book is being released soon. I'm in the middle of publishing it and I'm really, really, really excited because I worked really, really hard on this book. It's about intuitive eating and it's got some recipes inside. It also has like really good recipes like cream replacements, cheese replacements, healthier alternatives and then it just has some healthy breakfast, lunches, dinners, snacks. Intuitive eating for those of you who don't know, just listening to your body basically. It's becoming more intuitive so like your mind to body connection, you're strengthening it and you are listening to when you're actually hungry because a lot of the time, and this was me before, you eat when you're not actually hungry, maybe eat out of habit, maybe you're eating because it's lunchtime or dinner time, um, maybe you're eating because you're bored, maybe you're mindless eating. There's a lot of different reasons why we eat when we're not hungry. And then respecting your fullness and stopping eating when you're full. It sounds simple, but it's actually, there's a bit more to it than that. The book really goes through like how to actually do it and like um, how to work with your body and how to realize when you're full, what to do when you want to keep eating when you're full. When you start intuitive eating, you really go on a journey with yourself because you're completely changed. Like your mindset changes, also your body changes, which I didn't expect. You give yourself permission to eat chocolate, cakes, everything. So I wasn't expecting to see results when I first started this, but I thought, you know what, I'm just going to give it a go because it sounds like a nicer way to live than calorie counting and dieting for the rest of my life. Also, I chucked my scales out, stopped weighing myself completely, which I was doing quite a lot before I was always weighing myself. And then about nine months after I started intuitive eating, I came across a pair of scales. I was staying in my mum's house and... I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna step on them and see what they say, like why not? And I had lost a stone. Even when I wanted to lose a bit of weight, and by the way, I've, I've always been in good shape and I've always been happy with myself, but I always just wanted to like lose that tiny bit more just to be like where I once was before. And yeah, I stepped on the scales and I had lost a stone and I hadn't even been trying. Also, one other thing that happens is when you eat intuitively you care about your body more so like you have a shift in mindset like your mindset changes you don't just care about being skinny and losing weight like it teaches you to appreciate your body so it's like you feel good throughout the whole process and you get the results that you want and it's just an amazing amazing thing so yeah my book is about that and yeah i'm just really excited about it so i hope you guys will read it i hope you guys give this recipe a try as well because it is so good but thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and if you haven't subscribed to my account already please don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying my videos please give me a thumbs up and a like and a comment down below thanks guys Love you.